Okay, so I'm going to do some basic setup here for our little Mario video game. And then I'm also going to go over some of the basics here on these slides about broadcast and receive, initialization, and layering. All right, so first thing, I'm on the background, and I'm going to import a background I downloaded off the internet. And it's not, whoops, sorry. I'm going to go to import because I downloaded off the internet. So here's my Mario background. Now it's not perfectly sized. You have many options. You can use a different editing software to make it larger. You can stretch it. Um, you can edit it and just like, for example, use the eyedropper to sample that color. And then you could fill it in up there. You can do all sorts of things. I'm just going to go ahead and stretch this. Okay. It's going to get blurry, but I'm okay with that. This doesn't need to be perfect. Okay. Oh, I'm actually going to stretch it one more because I see some pixels there at the bottom. Again, it gets blurry. That's okay with me for now. All right. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a main character and I'm going to create some spikes. Okay. So here are the bad things. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to name them spikes. Okay. I downloaded some spikes images. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to import and I have some spikes here, okay? So here are my spikes. Those are way too big. Now you couldn't do this with the stage, sadly, I wish you could, but what you can do is right at the beginning, which will keep it from getting blurry, is you can say at the beginning, set size to, and then I don't know, like 50%. So there we go, those are some good spikes. Maybe even we'll go like 40%. Okay, so those are my spikes. I could drag them to where I want because I have this draggable checked up here. So those are the spikes my main character's got to get over. So here's my main character. Now what I would do is I would go onto the Google machine and I would look for um, Mario Sprite Sheet and I would maybe even add the word transparent. Then I would go to tools here and I would go to color and transparent. And again, this isn't perfect. So some of these you click on might not actually be transparent. So as you move this around, it is. I can tell because there's no white behind as I drag this around. So you can just pick any one of these. You don't even need to use Mario. I just use Mario because I love Mario. Okay, so for example, um, maybe I'll choose. No, I like this one. Uh, I'm going to choose this one. Okay, so I'm going to save this image to my desktop as Mario sprites. Okay, so now I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to import my Mario sprites. And again, what I do, oh, I did it on the wrong character, so I can drag it over to my other sprite. And then I can, for my spikes, I can delete that and go back to the spike costume. So for this one, I'm going to name it Mario. Okay. And then I'm going to go into here and I'm going to edit. And what I want to do is clean up all the ones I'm not using. So what I'm going to do is get a transparent block here. And I'm going to get rid of a bunch of these that I'm not using. And I'm just going to keep one little Mario. Okay, so there's my Mario. I always need to set it center to be right here. Boom, got it. There's my Mario. What I want to do with it is right at the beginning, let's set its size a little bit larger. In general, I would just get a bigger sprite sheet. But I'm just showing you the basics here. Okay, so there's my Mario I'm going to use. Let's even make him a little bit bigger, okay? There we go. I've got a Mario, okay? I want to be able to control it. So we're going to combine some of our if-else and our motion. I think the easiest ways to do this as a beginner are if um, or forever loop. If we are touching a button. So for us, we're just going to do three things. We're going to do, are we jumping and are we moving to the right and left? So if I'm moving to the right, then I want to change, whoops, not set. I want to change my X by 10. I'm going to duplicate the same thing and say, if I'm moving left, then go negative. And let's, I don't know, go six instead of the 10. Okay, so there we go. But I also want to jump. And so here's a really easy jump. I could do the same thing over here and I could be like, okay, here's a loop that's just waiting to do. If I press the space key, then jump. Now, remember I did this in one of the first videos that was on motion. Um, if I were to just go like change Y by some amount, he just teleports. So instead of doing that, I want to go up in multiple steps. So I'll do something like this. Repeat 10 times, go up and then repeat 10 times, go down. Okay, so let's try that, hit space, and there's a nice jump. And now I can 
run around and jump, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is slow this down a little bit. So I'm still gonna do 100 pixels, but I'm gonna do it in 20 steps, okay? And then I'm gonna do 20 steps and there, so it's a slower jump. I'm also gonna move just a little bit faster left to right. Okay, so let's speed that up and now, whoa, that's too slow. Um, but whatever, I'll be able to jump over these spikes, hopefully. So instead of 20, let's change this to something more like, I don't know, 14 and seven, that's about 100, and 14 and negative seven. So that's just a little smoother. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I wanna jump over these spikes. So what I could do um, is I could put, if Mario is ever touching sprites, then bad thing happens, right? So notice that here I split these two up. The reason I did that is I want this forever loop to always be moving left to right. However, this locks you in to 28 repeats. Repeat this 14 times and this 14 times if I jump. So if I were to put that in here and try and run this same thing, now I'm running left to right and as soon as I jump, I can't move while I'm in the air because it's locked me into only jumping and this other code isn't running. But when I split it up and run them both, now I can move in the air. I could be going forward and switch to going backwards. All right, so now what I want, and as a beginner, it's totally okay to split it up, but later we clean up our program. So now what we can say is if, and instead of pressing a key, we could say, you know what? If we're ever touching the spikes, and here's where we're gonna broadcast and receive. That's the first thing from these slides. So up at the top, I'm gonna do broadcast and wait. The reason for the wait is otherwise what happens is I might touch the spikes and then all of a sudden start, I'm die, 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 and you say the same message a thousand times. You don't want that. Instead, we want to say it once. So I'm gonna say a new message saying, uh, Mario died. Or more clearly, what do I want to happen? When Mario dies, I wanna restart the game. And so I'm just gonna call this restart the game. Okay, or maybe you want it to be lose a life, right? Whatever you want. Okay, I'm going to call it restart the game. And what I'm going to do is whenever, oops, sorry, when I receive, okay, and so this is all on Mario still, I'm going to say when I receive the message restart the game, I'm going to go to, and right now I'm going to check where's Mario. So Mario's at negative 146 and negative um, 97. So whenever I say restart the game, I'm gonna go back to, I'm gonna round it to negative 150 and negative 100. Okay, so now whenever I touch the spikes, it'll say, go restart the game and wait. The wait means wait until this code is run. So it's one command and then it goes back to sensing. So now if I touch the spikes, boop, game over and I go back to the beginning, right? Oh yeah, I made it over. Oh, dead, back to the beginning. And you could even say a little message, right? You could say uh, right here, oh no, you died, right? And so you go, Shh, boom, oh no, you died. And now notice that it doesn't detect again because of this wait right here. So it waits until the oh no, you died for two seconds finishes until it starts sensing again. This block is stopping when I run that. So now notice, boom, I can hover over the spikes and I'm invincible for those two seconds while it's talking. That could be something you incorporate into your game or not, that's totally okay. All right, so another thing in this is um, just the overall, shh, oh, I, I already passed it. So initialization. So overall at the beginning of your program, what you want to do is anything you've changed. I've changed the X and I've changed the Y of Mario's position. So when we start the game, we should go to that position, right? So if I'm anywhere else on the screen and I click start the game, I should go there. Now, if at any point in the game, I was dealing with changing directions, like for example, if somewhere in here I had a turn 15 degrees, well, then I should absolutely at the beginning of the game, tell Mario to reset his direction. Since I don't have a turn in here, it's not quite necessary, but you still shouldn't make assumptions about which directions Mario's facing. 
Because who knows, maybe somebody did turn Mario, and now, just because you never reset Mario's direction, the whole game I'm playing, Mario's going to be sitting in the wrong direction the whole game, unless, when you start the game, you put Mario in the correct place and look in the correct direction. Okay, something else you're going to deal with is layering. So when we make our first game, you're going to have multiple objects. So for example, let's say I make a tree. So I'm going to make a, a really beautiful tree. It's going to be, I don't know, like pinkish brownish. Let's do, no, let's go over here. This is more brownish. Okay, so I'm going to have a brown rectangle with, you guessed it, a green. Whoa, that's not in the right spot. Let's go, I think it's... No, that's a center you start at. Okay, so let's undo that. So here's the center, and then you go outwards from the center. If you hold shift, it stays circular, and if you don't hold shift, you can make it oval. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm even going to add some little apples because, oh, this is a cute little apple tree. Look at them. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's beautiful. It looks psychedelic. Okay, so there's my tree I drew. Okay, at the beginning, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, I want looks to be a little bit smaller. I drew it a little bit too big. That was nice the way it looked, but too large. Uh, let's even go to 60%. And also what I want to do is I want to say, hey, let's go to the front layer, which is wrong for now. Okay, and I'm going to put the tree right here. And now as I run, Mario goes behind the tree. That's not what I want. I wanted this tree to be background. So what I want to do is I want to say, I want the tree to go to the back layer. And now when I go to Mario, I want to say, hey, Mario, at the beginning of the game, make sure you go to the front layer. So that way, when I start, the tree's in the back, Mario's in the front, and I can absolutely walk around these. You can also use the go back one layer. Um, you could also go back negative one layer. That's okay, too. Or go back two layers, three layers. All right. So those are the basics of how to set up a Mario game with a background and some working spikes. Oh no, I died. Notice that um, what just happened is because I was jumping, I was in the middle of this right here when this happened. Uh, there's a couple easy fixes for that. One of those is a stop block. So you can stop not just uh, the everything that you can stop selected things so for example if it says stop all you can't put anything below it because nothing else will ever run after it but you could do something like stop everything but this script and then restart the game so now if i do that everything's running i run over and hit the spikes now all of these aren't highlighted anymore right they're all stopped so we can't now move mario anymore but what we could do is use the broadcast right we could say restart the game goes back to the beginning, says, oh no, you died, and nothing else is running, and then you could just broadcast a message which says, whoops, broadcast, um, let's not do broadcast and wait, let's just do broadcast like begin the actual gameplay or something like that, and then instead of um, when a uh, flag is clicked here, I could get rid of that and say when I receive the message begin actual gameplay and i can put that up here now whoops i that's all of it not just the when i begin so now that'll work for restarting the game however i can't actually start the game but that's an easy fix you simply say when the green flag is clicked you could just uh whoops let's do just broadcast and you could just say begin actual gameplay ready set boom so now everything turns on because i broadcast is begin actual gameplay. When I die, everything stops. He sits there for two seconds, then the game activates. Now watch which one of these are highlighted, right? When I run into the spikes, the stop all has stopped everything. And it's not until after these two seconds when we begin the gameplay again. So it's like a way of pausing after death. You go, boom, stop everything. And now you can play the game again, right? So I can control and now I can't move at all. And boom, I'm back to playing and woohoo. Oh, I thought I was going to make it. Let's try it. Come on. I did it. And then when I get over this right side of the screen, say, woo, you won. So I just wanted to show you a little bit about the broadcast and receive. The nice thing about the begin actual gameplay is notice that when I click the green flag, I can start the game. But when I restart, I could start the game. 
I could even have something like when space key is pressed, then broadcast, um, there we go, broadcast restart the game, right? Or I actually for that one, I'd probably use broadcast and wait. It, it becomes a small little detail when to use broadcast and wait when not to. So I could be in the middle of gameplay and go, wait a second, I want a space bar. And it goes, oh, you died. Let's go back, right? And so, woohoo. Oh, um, and I might want that actual, uh, I want might want to do that stop all scripts because notice how when I press space, I actually jumped to because space is the jump. So let's actually say when I press the R key, let's restart. Okay, so now I'm running around. I go, you know what? I'm, I'm in a bad spot. I missed a super golden key. Let's restart. And it goes, ah, you died. Let's restart. And now I can play the game again. Okay, hopefully that was helpful, you guys. Enjoy.